What's up guys? Welcome to another journey through 30. I missed you guys. Okay, so there's a lot to catch up. Um, first off, I haven't been doing long stretches of videos on YouTube strictly because I'm not getting the the viewership and I'm not getting the subscribership fast enough. I did hit the 4,000 or 5,000 watch hours. I just didn't get the 1,000 subscribers yet. So that's why you guys haven't been seeing me post longer content. Because the shorts is another way of gaining more watch hours, which is a little secret that a lot of people might not know. If you want to gain more watch hours and stuff like that, start doing shorts. I want to bring you guys abreast on is that I know I started doing Journey Through 30 as a weekly thing. But I started spacing out more to do a monthly thing because I feel that I have more things to talk about if I stretch it out month to month. So Journey Through 30 will be a month to month thing now instead of doing it as a weekly thing. Um, updates about my cancer journey. So I am at the tail end of my chemotherapy, hopefully. Um, my doctor did give me a choice if I'm going to be on chemotherapy for two years or five years. And I'll be coming up on the two-year mark in October of this year, of 2020, 22. So, hopefully, I'm not saying hopefully, I'm putting it out there that this will be my last few months of chemotherapy and I'll be done with all of this. Um, also, another update is my <laughs> chemotherapy treatment has been switched back from, from Eligard back to Lupron, which I'm going to insert right here on what that looks like. I'm not gonna lie if i had to choose between eligard and lupron i definitely would choose eligard because the needle is a lot shorter and it's just a 5 10 maybe 15 minute burn sensation after the injection site but this lupron shot you have to inject it into a muscle that's one of the reasons why the needle is so damn long and it has to be put in a site where it's more muscle tissue than fatty tissue. So you have to either inject it in like your butt, your thigh, like some part that's more muscle than fat. And it's very, very painful. I wanted to tell you guys was I did start doing therapy that recently has been put to a halt because of other issues that's been going on. But I really suggest that if you need help or if you're seeking help or if you want somebody to talk to or if you need just some clarity on some things that you're unclear about, I definitely suggest you guys do therapy. Therapy has helped me so much with different things that I needed to think through or a second opinion that I needed to hear outside of friends and family on about different issues that's going on. So if you're seeking help or if you need help, Please go find it. Find a therapist. Most insurances take therapists or they have them on their network for you to choose from. So take full advantage of mental health. Mental health is very now, let's get into fertility. So yes, I have put fertility on hold because of chemotherapy. And now that I'm at the tail end of everything, now I have to start putting it into perspective on what I want. I have to put plans in motion in order for those things to happen. So I am definitely trying to figure my way for the next, I want to say two to three years after chemotherapy because I know after chemotherapy is done, I have to get my body back. I have to make sure I get flush my system. I have to, you know, get on a real health kick in order to be healthy, in order to do the things that I want to do as in becoming a mom or maybe even adopting children or fostering children I'm not opposed to none of that so yes I have to prepare for that that is the next step after my chemotherapy which also brings me to this plastic surgery plastic surgery I have been cleared for plastic surgery since March of this year a little bit around my birthday when my two-year anniversary came around I was cleared to do plastic surgery so yes I am trying I am currently right now actively 
looking for the right surgeon that can do um, breast reconstruction. I decided against nipple reconstruction because, um, honestly, what's the point on having nipple reconstruction if you're not going to have the sensation of a nipple? So I don't see the point. So I'm just going to get breast reconstruction and I might do one or two things along with that. But right now, I'm currently actively looking for um, a plastic surgeon that takes my insurance so that it's covered under insurance, which is the next thing. If you have breast cancer, breast reconstruction, it's, it's covered, covered under your insurance. So, yes. Everyone who's had a lumpectomy, mastectomy, partial mastectomy, partial lumpectomy, you can get plastic surgery if that's what you want. And that's what I want. I want my boob to be equal to this one so it could just even out. But um, yes, I'm actively looking for that. Also, another update is um just preparing yourself, start taking your vitamins. Also, so what else you have to start doing when you're actively looking for plastic surgery you have to make sure that they're board certified you have to do your research so that's not really a quick and easy thing so that's a little bit taxing so um another update about my moods and like the side effects of switching drugs so the side effects that i've been getting it's only been a month since i've switched over to lubron so the side effects of that is I get really drowsy for like the first, I want to say maybe two, three hours of taking it. Um, I do get cotton mouth a little bit and I do slightly get like a appetite. So that's so far what I've recorded since I've taken it. Now, this month coming up in May will be my second month. So I'll confirm that within next month in May on how it is so don't quote me on that that's just my first go around so you really don't know what your real symptoms are unless you like take it three or four times consecutively so then you'll know like okay yes this 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 happens when you take it um as far as my mood has gone um nothing really major has changed i am a lot i'm alone most of the time i'm by myself a lot now so I guess that's me transitioning from being around people 24-7 to being by myself a lot. Which is not a bad thing because I kind of like being alone. But sometimes, you know, it kind of bothers you when you are alone. But I have, you know, it's up and down. So, loneliness is really severe when you, like, really dwell on it. But when you find things to do, it really doesn't so bother you. So, switching topics, I have some good news for you guys. Exquisite Glam is officially an LLC now. So if you guys want to book my beauty services, or if you would like a simple skincare application done, and you live in the Tri-State area, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, we travel to you, or you can travel to us. You can go book your services on our website at www.xqztglm.com. Exquisiteglam.com is official. It's been official for the last mm, maybe 30, 45 days or so. So it's officially lit. I'm absolutely proud of this moment because you guys don't know how long I've been sitting on making Exquisite Glam like an actual business. Like it's making me terrified right because now. I've wanted this so bad. Like you ever wanted something so bad that it, it hurts or... You're just seeing certain things that you know that you want to do, but you can't do it because really it's just procrastination, to be honest. Procrastination and finances. Like, when them two don't mix, it makes things very, very Honestly, hard. let's get into it. How about they don't tell you what happens or what all comes with when you get an LLC or when you make your business a S Corp or C Corp. Any type of official documentation to make your business official, they don't tell you about the things that come after that. That's the thing that be pissing me off. Like, some people 
Some people make entrepreneurship make it seem like it's just this lovely thing. But you really have to have a passion, a drive, consistency. Um, you definitely can't procrastinate. You definitely can't quit. It's like something that you have to like keep the wheel going. Like even when you feel like nobody's paying attention and nobody's gravitating towards you, in those moments you gotta keep it going. I am definitely, definitely a person that gave up a few a few times. Here's living proof. So those of you who really want to do your research on Miss Panama Thickness and Exquisite Glam, go look at my videos and see when I started my first video on YouTube. That date says 2014. We are now in what? 2022? Exactly. If you look at the timeline on trying to be consistent, I definitely fell off that consistency wheel plenty of times and i really didn't take makeup seriously honestly i was playing around maybe the first two or three years i was playing around and it wasn't until i did one of my best friends makeup and she was like nah you're really good at it like you should really make this a thing and if it wasn't for her pushing me and of course other people who always think of me when they want their makeup they gave up like long time ago trust me it's been times when i felt like you know what i'm good at doing my makeup so i'm just gonna stick to just doing my makeup but then when i do other people's makeup whether it be friends family friends of friends associates new co-workers and those type of things that look at my work and I didn't know that they're that's what I mean by sometimes you don't know that people are paying attention but sometimes people pay attention but then here's the next thing too it's always people that you don't know that support you the most that's the next thing too because I also felt like friends and family doesn't support your business until it blows up and that's mostly 95% of the time. But when you have your consistent people that's always around and always helping you, them the ones that keep pushing you. Or at least they kept pushing me. You also get the procrastination bug, which is what I have. Like, sometimes I just be like, you know what? I'm not doing it. I'm not in the mood. Not today. I'm not posting. Not today. I gotta juggle too many things at one time and then when I start thinking like that, nothing gets done. So I have to juggle my my regular Instagram page, Exquisite Glam Instagram page, Exquisite Glam's Facebook, my regular Facebook, the website, posting different things just to keep content because that's the next thing. People's attention spans are very short. So you have, when you flood the internet, that's more than likely when you get most eyes watching you. So if you do something this today and then you do something two months from now, people already forgot what you did two months ago. So you gotta like keep it consistent. You gotta it's a lot it. being consistent, it's a lot. But the remedy that I have, I mean, it, it, it hasn't paid off for me yet, but I see that it's getting there. Because I've been consistent since... I want to say I've been consistent since the year started. I was consistent a lot last year. But it wasn't like on a schedule like how I have it this year. So I post three times a week. I give myself a break on the weekends. I don't post nothing on the weekends. So I give, my, I give myself Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to post. I post during prime hours. And I post on all platforms. Instagram. Twitter. Facebook. TikTok. I even will post on um, little baby sites like fan bakes and stuff like that. I post on those things because you never know who and what is watching. You never, you never know. So it's best that you just flood the whole thing. Flood it. Even if they see the same video four or five different times, they're going to see it four or five different times on every platform. More eyes, the better. I know it sounds a little bit bombardish or it sounds like a little bit repetitive, but sometimes that's what you have to do in order to get what you want. So I want to be able to post content and then people recognize or see Exquisite Glam as, you know, it's a New York, Brooklyn based um, MUA or traveling makeup 
skincare business that could assist any anybody within the tri-state area when they see that moniker they know it's me or when they see that moniker they see that it's our business because it's not only me that runs exquisite glam it's just i'm the face and i'm also the one that's going to be applying the makeup or the skincare definitely by all means i'm a shy person trust me this camera and me which is my phone is me and the phone it's not like i'm talking to people i'm not networking that's another thing that i need to work on i'm not really putting myself out there like i should but i'm going to change like i'm aware of the things that i need to do but the biggest hurdle has been for me as far as getting traction is getting that internet type site if you get what i'm saying so in this day and age it's not like you could go door to door anymore it's more so social media presence and word of mouth so that's what i'm really working on right now so i had to revamp everything if like i said if you've been here when i first started exquisite glam and first started my youtube first started my youtube bro i didn't have no intro no outro i didn't even know what a thumbnail is i didn't even know how to do those things when i tried to make it on my own i could not do those things until one day i literally sat down maybe two days and i did my first intro by myself i did my logo by myself i did my outro by myself i came up with taking a snippet of the song and then i got a copyright claim because i used too much of the song all of those things is like trial and error that i had to learn on my own i didn't know those things with youtube that that's what you needed so a lot of things with youtube they try to tell you all right run a youtube to tell you what you need but a lot of people don't give you the key things that you need to do it on your own because it's very hard and it's a lot to explain and it's a lot to try to do and some people don't want to take the time to teach you i understand that too called gatekeeping because i see that a lot on youtube too like a lot of people be gatekeeping and that shit is annoying because say for instance i'm gonna bring it back to when i first started and i didn't know what a thumbnail or nothing or how to do those things if you go underneath somebody's video and then you comment oh i love how you did your intro can you show me or teach me how you did it more times than often you won't get somebody that said oh um i'm not gonna teach you or i don't know how to do it or i paid somebody to do it so then you have to go searching and surfing on your own and try to figure out how this person did x y and z or you go to other youtube channels on and listen take different things from different people and figure it out on your own which is what i did i had to do that so it's a lot of rules and regulations with youtube that i really don't like honestly youtube needs to get it together quickly because you have people who put bs on youtube and they get traction and followers very quick now i understand the scheme of things like negative things will get more likes and views viewership than people that are doing other things that well let's put this into perspective makeup for instance there's a lot of beauty gurus, there's a lot of hair gurus, there's a lot of kitchen beauticians, there's a lot of that on YouTube, right? Very few have cosmetology licenses to do hair and makeup, very few, or they're an esthetician and can do skincare and all of that. There's a very few of that on YouTube, but they have um, a je ne sais quoi or a... A different type of spin on things on how they do things so that gives them you know different people hey, you get what i'm saying so you have to i don't i hate that word you gotta find a niche you really don't have to find a niche because how you do things is how you do things but dealing with youtube it's definitely a headache now dealing with tiktok or dealing with instagram or dealing with twitter you post the perfect photo or a photo of your liking you put a nice cute little caption you put a nice little thing on a bio on the side let people know what you use how you used it whatever whatever and you can go viral off of that with youtube you have to jump through too many hoops until you reach to a point 
you have to do the 5,000 viewers, 5,000 hours, watch hours. Then you gotta do a thousand subscribers. Now, if you could have the watch hours but no subscribers, you're still not gonna get monetized. Of course, everybody wants to be monetized. Everybody wants a coin for all this hard work that we're doing. You have to come up with content. You gotta come up with a catchy title. You gotta do a nice thumbnail. You gotta, you know, keep the audience engaging. But when you have so much content and it's not being watched or it's not to a certain standard for YouTube, that's where a lot of people get discouraged. YouTube is definitely the, it's like Google. You need to find out something, you could go on Google, YouTube and find it. Or you could go on Google and find it. So, I understand the frustration because I've been there. I'm still there, honestly. I'm still there. Because I haven't been monetized on YouTube yet. But, I don't, I have the watch hours. I don't have the subscribers. But I still keep putting out content. Hoping that, alright, Slow and Steady wins the race right so and steady runs the race right so i might get two subscribers here this week one subscriber next week three subscribers the following week like slow and steady you know it's it's it's, it's a race right you you trying to it's not a race it's a marathon as they would say so i don't know it's just like i said this is the reason why i've gave i have given up Plenty of times when it came to YouTube, like, you know what, this is too much work. I gotta set up my phone, I gotta set up the camera, set up the iPad, I gotta get a tripod, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do, if I'm gonna do my full face, I gotta cut down on how this, and then I gotta edit, then I gotta add music, then I have to do this, do that. It is a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot. And then you don't get the recognition from doing the most. That's the problem. So really back in, we were talking about LLCs. So, that was my little rant, YouTube rant. But LLCs, yes, they don't tell you the things that go into having an LLC. Once you solidify with the government that you have a business, depending on what state you're in, you might have to jump through a little couple more hoops, right? So, let me tell you what I'm going through right now with the LLC. So, the state recognized that I have my LLC paperwork. Now I'm getting flooded by people who telling me I got to pay this. So I got to do this. This You have your business is legit. There's a state regulation here. There's a state regulation there. There's this, this, that, that you have to apply for, blah, blah, blah. They don't tell you those things when you're applying for an LLC. You just want to make your stuff a legit business and work honestly. Uncle Sam just finds a way, finds a way to be digging in your pocket. I mean... I understand now why people say when you start a business, you really don't make money. The first two or three, maybe five years of having a business, like you really don't see money. Like money, the type of money that you will want to see in the first couple years because there's a lot of things that you have to put out for. LLCs ain't cheap and if you don't got it like that, this is just money that you have to come out your pocket so you have to come out your pocket for the llc i went through legal zoom and it was like maybe four hundred dollars or maybe a little bit more than that it was under five have to pay for that you have to pay for insurance if you, you got to pay for that you got to pay for where you want to hold it then you have to worry about um mail if you want the mail coming to your house for the business if you're running a business out of your house or if you're running it out of brick and mortar or if it's a traveling thing now you have to get car insurance because you're running it on the road there's a lot of things that you have to pay for and that's the reason why a lot of services are so expensive so i'm not gonna lie for a while my basic face i could just say i would charge like maybe 60 75 dollars to do a full face around here that's cheap in brooklyn is cheap and then i started listening to other people's prices but it's not until i got into the llc thing where i'm like yeah these numbers gotta come up because i'm actually taking a loss so i gotta bump them prices up so at least one face is enough to pay a bill. 
or one face is enough to pay something that the business you have to think about these things you got to think about how much you pay for equipment, how much you pay for your time, how much you going to pay yourself because that's time. What you going to pay yourself? Do you have to travel? Is it stationary? The wear and tear on your body. Um, foot, foot in it, which is networking. All of these things. You have to add all that up. Up. You have to add it all. It all inquires on the price. Now, if you're getting into the nitty gritty, like you're hands on making your own products or making your own tools, making your own equipment, then the price is gonna go up some more because it's a lot of workmanship that goes into those things. So now that I'm on that side of the LLC or entrepreneurship, I can see why prices are the way that they are right now because things are very expensive now I, I believe that we're in a time of inflation because a lot of stuff that i give you for example hair right wigs i'm not the type to buy a six seven hundred dollar wig i'm the type to just buy the hair and make the wig myself but i see why girls is charging a thousand dollars for a wig it's the work it's handy it's handwork whether they sewing it on a machine or they're doing it by hand it's work it's time consuming but here or there, I don't want to deter nobody. If you want to start a business, start it. If you want to start that podcast, start it. If you want to start a YouTube, start it. But whatever it is that you want to do, start it. But just make sure that you're consistent with it because you have to be consistent. If you're not consistent, you're not going to get the results that you want. I'm a living testimony of that. Like I said, I done gave up plenty of times. More than I can count. And my record shows for that. Because if you go down my, my videos, I have over 200 videos on YouTube. If you go through that timeline from 2014 to 2022, how many space and gaps I have in between each video to show you how much times I done procrastinated and just gave up. But don't give up. If you really have a passion for something and you it's something that you really want to do, just do it. You don't want to live with regrets. I know, I'm, even though I'm 33, there's a lot of things that I don't want to regret when I get older. So, that's why I'm trying it's to do that. It's time consuming. But, here or there, I don't want to deter nobody. If you want to start a business, start it. If you want to start that podcast, start it. If you want to start a YouTube, start it. But, whatever it is that you want to do, start it. But, just make sure that you're consistent with it. Because, you have to be consistent. If you're not consistent, you're not going to get the results that you want. I'm a living testimony of that. Like I said, I done gave up plenty of times. More than I can count. And my record shows for that. Because if you go down my, my videos, I have over 200 videos on YouTube. If you go through that timeline from 2014 to 2022, how many space and gaps I have in between each video to show you how much times I done procrastinated and just gave up. But don't give up. If you really have a passion for something and you, it's something that you really want to do, just do it. You don't want to live with regrets. I know, I'm, even though I'm 33, there's a lot of things that I don't want to regret when I get older. So that's why I'm trying to regret do anything. Do anything that your heart's desire. I know that's what stopped me a lot of times because it stops me from doing a lot of things that I want to do because I always second guess myself. Straight out. So I'm trying to put my best foot forward and break out of that habit because that's one of the reasons why I procrastinate because I'm thinking like, well... I might not like it or people might not like it or people wouldn't be interested in like I would have come up with an idea I might tell a few people and then from their responses it will kill how I feel about something and I'll just be like yeah F it I'm not gonna do it so don't listen to the pe uh, outside people if you have an idea it's in your mind and you want to do it just do it don't tell nobody just do it just do it cuz you never know. In the long run, it might be something that other people need that you didn't even know that you created a, a niche for or created a environment for. So just to say this, um, maybe I should add that into my into the Journey Through 30 segment. I could give you some more insights about LLCs. So, um, oh, what comes with it after you get an LLC, like things like that. Like we could do a little research thing together because I'm a research buff. I will sit down and read a whole bunch of things or what needs to be done or whatever the case may be. I'll go by the book instead of like winging it where however people get by. Like I don't do that. I get nervous and start glitching when that type of stuff happens. So I'll go by the book. Like, okay, you got to do this, this, that, and the third. So, um... I'm going to close this now. 
um thank you guys for looking at my videos thank you guys for sticking with me for this long thank you guys for watching journey through 30 thank you guys for supporting exquisite glam and i'll see you in my next one bye oh yeah one more thing i forgot to tell you guys Thank <laughs> you.